In the second unit of this lecture, we will introduce computation graphs, which is a fundamental concept to understand uh, computation, larger chains of computations, and also the computation of gradients in these large chains of computations. So here is again the maximum likelihood um, estimator for the log logistic regression model that we've seen on the previous slides. So we've already seen that minimizing this requires uh, solving a nonlinear objective that doesn't have a analytic solution and therefore requires a gradient-based optimizer. So we need to compute the gradients of this expression. Luckily, in the above case, the gradient is fairly simple to compute. And I leave this as an exercise, but I, I uh, illustrate it here. It's uh, simply the prediction of the model minus the true value, the true label times um, the input at um, data point i. It's a very simple equation. Unfortunately, it's not true that these gradients are so simple to compute in general for more complex models that we're interested in this lecture, in particular for deep neural networks that layer a lot of computations um, where you, you simply can't, uh, with pen and paper, derive the gradients with respect to any of these millions or billions, it's a gigantic number typically of parameters, uh, just using pen and paper. So the the question becomes now, and this was also the question for a long time in the deep learning history, how, how can we basically efficiently compute this? Right? And, and so this was for the first time demonstrated in the 80s that, that this is actually possible. And this, this was what was helping the breakthrough of deep learning. So how can we efficiently compute the gradients in the general case? So the key idea of computation graphs, right? So um, the efficient computation, this is what the backpropagation algorithm does. But in order to understand the backpropagation better, we need to understand what a computation graph is first. So the key idea of computation graphs is to decompose complex computations into sequences of very simple, more atomic assignments. And we call this sequence of assignments a computation graph, or some people also call it the source code, because like a computer program that you execute line by line, like assembly code. The forward pass then takes a training point X and Y as input and computes a loss from that. So this is um, what you can see here. As we will see, the gradients of this loss can be computed using a backward pass called a backward pass. That's why it's called the backpropagation algorithm in the next unit. And the key message of this slide is that both the forward pass and the backward pass are efficient to compute. And this is uh, because we, ex we can exploit dynamic programming. That is, we can store and reuse intermediate results. We will heavily reuse intermediate results instead of recomputing them, both in the forward and the backward pass. And this decomposition and reuse is of uh, computation is really key to the success of this backpropagation algorithm. Without this, it wouldn't be possible to apply this algorithm to the size of models that we apply to. It would be unthinkable to optimize deep networks with millions or billions of parameters without this decomposition and reuse of computation. And that's why the backpropagation algorithm, which adjusts these millions and billions of parameters in our deep models, is still the primary workhorse for deep learning today. So now let's look at what a computation graph is. A computation graph, as we will define it in this lecture, has three kinds of nodes. Input nodes in green, parameter nodes in orange, and compute nodes in red. Also, the loss function is a compute node in our setting. The input nodes uh, don't have parameters. 
they are the input of our learning problem. They are basically the data set. This is where the data set goes into the computation graph. So for instance, we have the X and the Y here. Um, the parameter nodes is where the parameters of the model are stored. And this is what we want to update. This is what we're interested in when computing um, backpropagation, when backpropagating gradients, we are interested in, well, we, are, we need to backpropagate gradients for all nodes, but what we're really interested in, in the end is the, the gradients for these parameters, because this is where the updates are applied to. This is what we want to estimate. And um, finally, we have the compute nodes, which could be either the final node is loss function or intermediate compute nodes that take inputs, for instance, input nodes or previous compute nodes or parameters and produce a result, which, which compute an assignment. We assign a variable or the value to a variable. And this is how we can decompose complex computations into a, a sequence of, of simpler computations using this graphical formul formulation. So here we have, we are looking at a very specific example of linear regression. So what do we need to do in linear regression? Well, and this is uh, the source code here, right? So it has, the source code has three, uh, four lines of code, one, two, three, and four. These are four assignments that we need to compute you can think of this again as assembly code, for instance. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to multiply x, the input x. This is a 1D example. So we have 1D input x with a one dimensional parameter w1. And this is happening here. So u is assigned the uh, product of w1 and x. So now we have u, now we need to add the bias term. So to u, we add the term uh, w, the uh, zero, the parameter w zero here in orange. And adding w zero to u results in the assignment of y hat. This is the prediction of the model already in this simple linear case, right? Simple linear model. So we have the prediction y hat now. In the last lecture, this was called f, but here from this lecture on, we are often used the y hat notation as the prediction. And then the next step we need to do in order to be able to compute a loss is to subtract from this prediction the true value y, which is the input from the data set. So this is a point in the data set that corresponds to the input x. The y that corresponds to input x. So we subtract and call this or assign this value to the variable c. And then finally, because we want to compute uh, as a loss, um, a L2 loss, so square of this difference, we take this value C and compute this square and we assign this computation result to the variable L. And this is how we write the linear regression problem, which we could also write in a single line, we, how we write it in, in a, as a sequence of atomic operations. Now there's multiple levels of granularities that we can use. This is a very fine level of granularity that we have used here, but we can use more coarse grained levels of granularity as well. And what we want to choose depends on how big we want to make these atomic units, which level of atomic units we still can handle. For instance, in, um, in the educational framework that you will work with, we have one unit that is responsible for linear uh, for an affine transformation for a linear transformation that includes both the bias and um, the multipl multiplicative part. So in this case here, we could combine one and two, right? And then we would change this computation graph as such. So now we this one and two step have collapsed into one step, which directly computes this affine transformation from x to uh, the assignment y hat. And so this graph now takes us, this y hat in this graph takes us input, this node takes us input uh, x and uh, both w0 and w1. And we can also, um, for instance, collapse the loss. We can say, well, um, maybe we want to compute not these two things here independently, but we want to compute uh, 
them jointly. We're going to compute um, uh, y hat minus, so the prediction of the model minus the true label squared directly. And this is what we did here. And so this last node here collapses and we have just two computation steps. So this is the first step. If you're going left to right, we have one step here and a second step here. So there's multiple ways we can write this and it really depends on how we want to implement it and how complex we can go um, and still efficiently implement this. Here's another example for a logistic regression where the input uh, is um, first transformed into a variable u. So we have an affine transformation that takes x, w0 and w1 and computes u. And then uh, we pass this u through a nonlinearity uh, sigma function here. Uh, again, this could be decomposed into individual operations. We have just summarized it here as a sigma function because it's not too complex as an operation. Um, and this produces the assignment of y hat. And then we have this loss function, which is the binary cross entropy loss that compares um, y hat with the true label y. We could also write this in terms of um, a weight vector w and a input vector x. So now we have simply replaced um, these two scalars with a weight vector and we have replaced this x with a vector for instance one and x1 to incorporate the bias right when we work with the educational framework we will work with vector um, operations and so we'll always consider this kind of setup and what we can also do is we can stack two of these operations uh, behind each other and this is already a, a sneak preview to what we will talk about in uh, the next lecture, lecture number three, which is called a multi-layer perceptron. This is the first deep model that we consider. It's deep because it has more than one layer, it has already two layers. A layer as a layer we denote not all the layers basically except the input layer. So in this case we have a hidden layer and an output layer. So it's two layers. Uh, logistic, regress lo logistic regression model has only one layer. It's just the output layer. So in this case, we have a affine transformation of X with this weight matrix in this case, W, which produces a vector that is um, passed element-wise through this nonlinearity, thus resulting in a vector of hidden uh, information H, so it's a H vector, a feature vector H, and then that vector h is then um, multiplied with a weight vector in this case to produce a scalar so this is w2 and then passed the scalar is passed also through a sigmoid nonlinearity to result in the assign or to lead to the assignment y hat and then we are applying the binary cross entropy loss here so this is already you can already see how we can now with these computation graphs model different levels of granularity elegantly and how we can stack larger computations. This is already, a, uh, this is um, still a very small model, right? Um, the deep networks that we will talk about later in this lecture have 50 or 100 or even more layers like this. But you can imagine how we can stack them together.